What's up guys, CPU Mod here back with another video and if you are in the market for a new CPU, chances are you may have looked at the motherboard market and gone, damn, there's a lot of options out there. So today we're going to help you break things down and get you to grips with what on earth all the different numbers and series are to make the best decision when buying a new motherboard. And whether you're looking at the H series, the B series or the Z series, we're going to sort of give you guys some ideas on what they are and help to pick out your new motherboard. So, well with that being said, today let's go ahead and get started. Now the time of recording, the Coffee Lake family isn't fully out yet, so the numbers we're using definitely still reply to the Coffee Lake family, however there may be some slight variations here and there. But with that being said, things like Z, H and B series chipsets are still going to be exactly the same from the Coffee Lake to their 7th generation family. So yes, Coffee Lake fully isn't out yet, but we can still do some looking into what they're going to offer. So do keep in mind, Coffee Lake just isn't out yet. Now, if you really want to know about what a chipset is, how it works and what it does, I do recommend you look up into that video. However, today, kicking things off, we have the actual segmentations that Intel has set up for their chipset market. And that is their basic value, their mainstream enthusiast, and also to business and slash kind of corporate section, which not many of us really fall into the business and corporate kind of side, so that doesn't really matter too much of us. And today, we won't be covering the Xeon type platform stuff. So your C-series chipsets won't really be covered here. When we're mainly looking at what you're going to be looking at when you grab yourself an 1151 CPU or 2066 CPU, which a lot of us are buying here today. And taking a look, however, at the lower spec, for example, we do find ourselves the first of the H series chipsets. These guys are usually marked as a H310 or H generation and then 10, so we've had H110 for quite some time. And coming up for Coffee Lake, we are expected to see the H310 offering a basic and value-oriented system. With enough connectivity to get you by and basic entry-level connectivity, including one PCI 16X slot, usually two RAM DIMMs, and a few USB ports here and there, with the very basic power delivery system, it will support just about any Intel chips on the market. However, you won't have any overclocking support, the power delivery could be a little bit better built, However, with that being said, it does strike a really good place if you are in a budget system. You can build a system without really exploding the bank account. However, with that being said, we do then step it up to the next tier, which is kind of like your mainstream option offering in the H370 or the H Generation 70 class of motherboard. We've seen H270 and also too, we're going to be expecting the H370 chipsets and these are again your mainstream offering. They're actually much closer to their Z brothers rather than their lower end H brothers, but obviously they offer a lot more in terms of connectivity and are a little bit more well-rounded, offering in most cases multiple PCI Express lanes and also do much more connectivity on that front, more USB ports, an option for Intel Optane and also to multiple M.2 drive options, they are usually a little bit better spec and on top of this deliver better power delivery systems and overall better manufactured boards. However just like their lower end brothers, unfortunately these guys also too don't support any overclocking, that you'll need to step up to the next generation. And in terms of the price point, yes the H370 or the H70 class of motherboards do cost a little bit more than their lower class 10 series brothers, but overall will do a really decent job there. And for a lot of people out there, the H series definitely gives you a really awesome budget build. In fact, if you take a look behind us, you will see a couple H series motherboards if the model number is available, and they do a decent job there. Then if we do step up one step higher, we get to the enthusiast market motherboards with the Z370 and the Z390 coming up at some point, but essentially it is your Z series family where where these really do come in. Now, as it is an enthusiast platform, do first and foremost expect these guys to be much more expensive than the H and the other motherboards we're going to be talking about here today. As they are enthusiasts, they do come with multiple PCI Express slots with support for many more PCI Express lanes. Obviously, they deliver much more better power delivery systems as they do allow for overclocking. So, if you are buying a K SKU, you will need to grab yourself a Z series motherboard. They deliver much more USB 3.0 lanes and also to many more RAM slots in terms of 4 versus 2, so when it comes to building a high-end system, the Z series is definitely one that you should be considering. However, with that being said, if you are buying something on the 2011-3 or 2066 platform, you will need to look into the X series chipsets, being X99 or X299. They deliver even more connectivity, better support for high-end processors, better power delivery systems, and also to better multi-video card support. That being said, 
that they're also too much more expensive and also to support overclocking. However, if you are focusing more on the 1151 or your mainstream style CPUs, something like the Z series is sort of where you're going to be going for the highest of the highest end. Not to mention the Z series motherboards usually have some more fancy LEDs on these guys. They usually have a little bit better design and overall, thanks to their more expensive price tag, usually come with a lot more features. Now you will notice there's also to a couple other chipsets out there if you are buying into the 1150X platform. That is the B360 platform and that is also to a pretty important one. In fact, we've got a B360 board or a B series board right there and a couple other B series boards behind me and they're actually really decent value boards without really breaking the bank. Now the B stands for a business oriented motherboard and whilst they are perfectly fine for gaming systems, they do offer a few less supported items but they also do support some more stuff which makes a little bit more sense on the business front. For example, they don't have as many PCI Express slots or RAM DIMMs, however they usually have more USB slots which makes it a little bit more, well, better for business type of operations. Once again, they're also too pretty well decent on the value front and that also too helps in the business side. For example, if you're going to be specking out a massive office full of PCs, you're really not going to be buying them with Z370 motherboards, you're probably going to be looking down in that B series chipsets, delivering you again the low spec price but also to the features you need on a business front. Now there's also to a couple other chipsets such as the Q series chipsets that are much like the B series however Q series is for your more enterprise and corporate markets that are usually not found on standalone motherboards that you can just go down to the shop and buy. They usually offer things like more HSIO lanes and also to more USB connectivity whilst they do lose out on things like RAM slots and also to PCI Express lanes. So you kind of lose out on some but win out on others when it comes to the Q series chipsets. Again just like the B series if you were to find one of these boards they still would definitely run gaming systems no worries but with that being said they're more business and kind of enterprise oriented rather than the gaming and value market side. Now with that being said both the B and Q series chipsets do not support overclocking with the only real ones that do support overclocking being the Z and X series chipsets. So okay then we've had a brief overview as to which chipsets do what and what they're really designed for. What exactly are we going to be doing with these particular builds? Well simply but if you are going to be buying a k SKU CPU, you definitely need to look at a Z series motherboard to support the overclocking as there's no point buying an unlocked CPU and not taking advantage of that unlocked processor as you could simply step back to a non-unlocked processor and buy an even better video card if you were going to do that. So if you're buying a k SKU, buy yourself a Z series chipset. If you're not going to be going with the k SKU, that definitely opens you up to a lot more options. You can save quite a bit of money by dropping back to a B series or even a H series motherboard and grabbing yourself decent enough connectivity and decent enough performance with a decent build but without having to pay the massive price tag that does come along with a lot of Z series motherboards. Something like the H10 series could also do go pretty well here for a low cost and budget based system. Still offers you PCI Express connectivity for your high end video cards and still offers you enough RAM slots to get you by but again doesn't come in with the bigger and more expensive price tag that your higher end Z series motherboards do offer. Again, as I did mention, the B-Series is also to a pretty decent option for gamers and people who are building office systems. I mean, we got one once again right up in that corner which I used in an office computer and it works perfectly fine. And in fact, we do have a HTPC downstairs that is running a B-Series motherboard. So at the end of the day, if you are thinking of grabbing yourself a B-Series motherboard for playing video games and using as a gaming machine, don't really worry too much. It will get the job done, no worries. And with that being said, for the Q-Series chipsets, don't really worry about them because you can't exactly buy them too much in a standalone motherboard. A lot of them do come in as pre-built systems or part of another sort of server and enterprise piece of gear. So whilst there are a few motherboards you can definitely buy with Q-Series chipsets, they're really not as popular as your other types that we did mention here. So with that being said, picking a motherboard with your CPU is actually a pretty simple process. If you're getting an unlocked CPU once again, get yourself a Z series motherboard or otherwise look into the B series or H series as they offer you really good performance without needing to pay the massive price tag for an overclockable motherboard. Though with that being said, you can run a K SKU CPU in a B series chipset and you can run super low end motherboards with super high end CPUs, it will be all interchangeable 
interchangeable, but it is best to buy a motherboard that is definitely suited for your CPU. With that being said, guys, if you want to pick up some of these CPUs or read a little bit more into these chipsets, I've left all the links you need to find down in that description box. Also, do let me know down in that comment section what motherboard do you run in your desktop PC. Personally, I'm on the X99 platform, but let me know what you run. Otherwise, once again, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.